I'm more shocked that there's anybody remaining in free agency with all the action we've seen in the offseason. So, what ultimately is going to be the fate of these remaining fellas? Tyron Matthew, you've been all over this actually on social media in terms of some of these visits and whatnot. What, what's the latest for him? Tyron Matthew, the Honey Badger, had a virtual visit with the Philadelphia Eagles yesterday. Amazingly, several big-name talents and Pro Bowl caliber players are still available. It's only a matter of time until these players find a new home. But where will that be? Here are our predictions for where each of the top remaining free agents will land. Tyron Matthew, Philadelphia Eagles. Matthew had a virtual visit with the Eagles, but no deal immediately materialized. Simply put, it's in the interest of both teams to reach an agreement. The Eagles are an up-and-coming team that should make plenty of noise in a wide-open NFC. They have a stellar front seven and arguably a top-five corner in Darius Slay. Adding a do-it-all safety like Matthew could take this defense to a whole new level. Jadavian Clowney, Cleveland Browns Clowney took a one-year prove-it deal with the Browns last year, and, well... He sure proved it. He regained his star-like form by recording nine sacks, his best total in three years, and a pair of forced fumbles. A wise man once said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Clowney was the ideal complement to Miles Garrett in the front seven, and the two sides have every reason to continue this partnership. The Browns are in win-now mode and have every incentive to retain Clowney as a part of their core. Jarvis Landry, Green Bay Packers the Packers traded Devontae Adams to the Las Vegas Raiders, then watched Marquez Valley Scantling leave for the Kansas City Chiefs, and we're still waiting for them to even attempt to replace either guy. Oh look! Five-time Pro Bowler Jarvis Landry remains unsigned following his release from Cleveland. He has five seasons of 900-plus yards on his resume, despite never playing with an elite quarterback. Don't you think he and Aaron Rodgers would do some fun things together in Green Bay? What are you waiting for, cheeseheads? Odo Beckham Jr. Los Angeles Rams OBJ was the perfect mid-season pickup by the Rams, following his release from Cleveland. He turned back the clock and emerged as the game-breaker we previously saw in New York, as he helped the Rams win Super Bowl 56. Sean McVay found the perfect way to implement Beckham in his offense. The latter will likely miss time as he recovers from an ACL tear he suffered in the Super Bowl. A one-year deal makes sense for both sides, and it gives Beckham the chance to reset his market for 2023. Stefan Gilmore, Las Vegas Raiders The Raiders made two big-time splashes early in the offseason, acquiring Devontae Adams via trade and signing sack specialist Chandler Jones. So now, the Raiders have Jones and Max Crosby wreaking havoc in the pass rushing department. Nate Hobbs and Traven Merrig, two of the top rookies of 2021, will continue to patrol the secondary. Still, you can't have too many quality defensive backs in today's pass-happy NFL. Especially in the AFC West. West. The Raiders would be wise to pick up the 2019 Defensive Player of the Year on a cheap deal to further bolster their secondary. Gilmore missed nine games last season, but was a difference maker when healthy. Dwayne Brown, Indianapolis Colts. The Colts' usually stout offensive line wasn't as dominant in 2021. The retirement of Anthony Costanzo hurt tremendously, no doubt. And with Eric Fisher gone, there's still a hole at offensive tackle. Veteran tackle Dwayne Brown isn't a pro bowler at this phase of his career, but he's still well above average and would slot in nicely on this star-studded Colts line. Indy needs to give Matt Ryan all the protection they can, and adding Brown on a short-term pact would go a long way towards doing that. J.C. Treader, New York Giants In a surprise move, the Browns released Treader for the purpose of clearing cap space. Yet even more surprisingly, Treader remains unsigned. The New York Giants have one of the league's worst offensive lines and should be all for adding Treader to their roster. Per Pro Football Focus, he only allowed one sack in each of the last three seasons. Adding Treader to an O-line with Andrew Thomas could be a game-changing move for rookie GM Joe Shane. Akeem Hicks New England Patriots The Patriots have been surprisingly quiet in free agency up to this point. But Bill Belichick has never been afraid to wait patiently before bringing in quality veterans on bargain basement deals. There is a need for fresh juice on the aging front seven, and the longtime Bears standout would find himself right at home in New England. Hicks would give the Pats a run-stopping force who can also generate some much-needed pressure off the edge. Melvin Ingram 
Dallas Cowboys. Losing Randy Gregory in free agency is a big time blow to the Dallas defense. They've got to find more pass rushers to help Micah Parsons, and Ingram could very well fit that bill. Ingram quietly had a productive 2021 season, grading at 79.7 by PFF on the year. His sack totals aren't exactly eye-popping these days, but he still brings the heat as a pass rusher and run stopper. Dallas may as well take on the former pro bowler on an affordable contract. They don't have many other options. Julio Jones, Indianapolis Colts. If there is one team that makes sense for the fading Jones, it's the Colts. And you can easily guess why. Indianapolis traded for Jones' longtime teammate Matt Ryan earlier this offseason. If there's a quarterback who can help Julio turn back the clock for one more year, it's the guy who was throwing him passes in Atlanta for 10 seasons. The Colts wouldn't need Jones to be a 1,000-yard pro bowler, but he could at least help take some of the pressure off Michael Pittman Jr. And plus, Jones' chemistry with Matty Ice could still make him a weapon in the red zone. Eric Fisher, Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings O-line was ranked a disappointing 23rd overall by PFF for the 2021 season. The lone bright spot was a solid rookie year from Christian Derrissaw. 2019 first-rounder Garrett Bradbury hasn't come around yet, and, well, the clock is ticking. Simply put, the Vikings need to add one or two more capable starters on the O-line before Week 1. The former Colt Eric Fisher makes a lot of sense as an affordable pickup, given his success as a run blocker. Fisher is often a liability in pass protection, but he'd be an upgrade over Brian O'Neill. And with Dalvin Cook in the backfield, Fisher's elite run blocking would serve as a fine trade-off for his woes in the passing game. Trey Flowers? Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons' pass rush was horrible last year, recording just 18 sacks over 17 games. Yeah, gross. We know. Atlanta can address the defensive line with their plethora of picks in this year's draft. But why not find some quality veteran starters if the price is right? That brings us to former Patriots and Lions defensive end, Trey Flowers. He has four seasons of at least 6.5 sacks on his resume. He was limited to 14 games for his final two seasons in Detroit, but a healthy Flowers can push for double-digit sacks. Melvin Gordon III Baltimore Ravens The concerning amount of injuries in their backfield last year should inspire the Ravens to pick up a veteran workhorse ahead of Week 1. And that is where Melvin Gordon enters the picture. Gordon surpassed 900 rushing yards in each of his two seasons with the Denver Broncos. He's rushed for at least eight touchdowns every year since 2016, too. Put Gordon as the lead back in that Baltimore offense, and we guarantee you 1,000-plus yards and eight-plus touchdowns. Just saying. Jerry Hughes Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals need to address their front seven after letting Chandler Jones walk in free agency. Longtime Bills defensive end Jerry Hughes isn't on Jones's level, of course, but he'd be a formidable sidekick to J.J. Watt. Though his sack totals aren't exactly eye-popping, Hughes remains a constant threat to get after the QB. PFF has graded his pass rushing game at 87.4 since 2019, which they noted was the 10th best among edge rushers. That sounds like someone Arizona could use in a pivotal year for Kyler Murray and company. Rob Gronkowski? Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This one, I mean, it's too obvious. Gronkowski has made it clear that it's either the Tampa Bay Buccaneers or retirement. Maybe if Tom Brady stayed retired, Gronk would have considered another destination like Buffalo or Cincinnati. But we all know he won't ever play for another QB as long as Brady is still around. Gronk looked like an all-pro throughout the 2021 season when healthy. He still got it and remains Brady's security blanket on third downs and in the red zone. So, if Gronk returns, it'll be another cheap one-year pact. Anthony Barr, Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins have been one of the most active teams in the offseason, mostly focusing on the offensive side of the ball, where they've already added Tyreek Hill, Cedric Wilson, Taron Armstead, Connor Williams, Raheem Mostert, and Chase Edmonds. Their defense has the makings to be a top 10 unit. But they could always use another veteran linebacker, which is why GM Chris Greer should bring former Viking Anthony Barr aboard. The four-time Pro Bowler missed six games in 2021 and all but two contests in 2020. But when he's healthy, Barr can be a difference maker all over the field. Miami's linebacker core leaves a lot to be desired. So why not bring in Barr on a short-term deal? They have nothing to lose, and if he can stay on the field, Barr could go down as one of the best offseason additions of 2022. Justin Houston, Buffalo Bills. The Bills address their need for a pass rusher by signing future Hall of Famer Von Miller. 
but more help on the defensive line is certainly needed. No Bills player has hit double-digit sacks in a season since 2016. Veteran mainstay Justin Houston, who had 4.5 with the Baltimore Ravens in a limited role last season, could help bolster the pass rushing group. Houston generated 24 pressures and 7 hurries despite playing just 61% of the Ravens' defensive snaps last season. In an expanded role, he could make a considerable difference alongside Miller. Cole Beasley Dallas Cowboys The cap-strapped Cowboys had to move on from Amari Cooper and Cedric Wilson, leaving them down two productive receivers. Jerry Jones will need to go bargain shopping to offset the damage of those two departures. And old friend Cole Beasley, who played with Dallas from 2012 to 2018, just might be the answer. Beasley is a reliable third-down security blanket, and he's good for 60-plus catches and 500-plus yards a season. That's all Dallas really needs, given the rest of the offensive firepower they possess. Bringing back Beasley would be a savvy move for a Cowboys team that arguably lost more talent than any other club this offseason. Will Fuller the fifth? Arizona Cardinals. Arizona needs more pass catchers after moving on from Christian Kirk. So, wouldn't Will Fuller, who's also DeAndre Hopkins' former teammate from Houston, be a worthwhile addition? Injuries have plagued Fuller throughout his career. He's missed at least five games every year since 2017, and he was limited to two contests with Miami last season. But a healthy Fuller can make a notable difference on offense. He's averaged 57 yards per game throughout his career, and he is certainly capable of putting up 1,000 yards in a full season. He's one of the fastest receivers in the game, and is a ability to stretch the field would make him a dangerous weapon for Kyler Murray. But which remaining free agents do you hope your favorite team will land this offseason? Join us in the comments section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.